Like I said, I don't care what you believe. It doesn't matter to me, provided it doesn't harm another person. However, if what you believe is demonstrably false and you want to pass it off as true in a science classroom, I have an issue with that. If you want to say it in the religion class, fine. In the belief system class, fine. In the history of human thought class, fine. Do you remember that case in New Jersey where there was the, the middle school student who re tape recorded the history teacher saying that the students will burn in hell if they don't believe in Jesus Christ? Do you remember that? And it became a whole hullabaloo in the district and it would say separation of church and state, this is a violation of the, the First Amendment, or Second Amendment, whichever amendment, okay? First Amendment, separation of church and state. And everybody got up in the, uh, the American Civil Liberties Union, everybody's jumping arms about separating church and state. And I'm saying, and by the, among the statements made by this teacher were that the Big Bang and evolution were not scientific theories and that Noah's Ark carried dinosaurs. Now, <laughs> so, at some point, I said, I can't keep listening to this. And I wrote a really short letter. Short letters are the best, I think. And all I said was, after two other letters rambling on about keeping religion out of the school because of the amendment in the Constitution, I said, this is not an issue of the separation of church and state. No, you got that wrong. This is an issue of the separation of ignorant, scientifically illiterate people from the ranks of school teachers. <laughs> but they will stand up and they will ask, if there is no God, what stops you from raping and killing everyone you want to rape and kill? What stops you from doing that? And my answer is always, you're absolutely right. I have raped and killed every single person I want to rape and kill. And that number is zero, you evil motherfucker! It's zero! It's a goose egg! And if your number is a positive integer, Sign up for prison! Get the fuck out of our society! Because morality is more important than God! And we know that because you stupid motherfuckers say the sentence, God is good! And if morality is not more important than God, you don't get to say that. It doesn't mean anything unless there's some good that we believe in, some morality, then you can't say God is good. Then you just say God, whatever he does is okay. And according to the Bible, it kind of is. He does everything bad. Um, but at least there was one thing you could say. Nobody said, well, why don't we give them what they want, the bombs? Why don't we just surrender? Why don't we look for the root causes of their grievance? There was at least none of that bullshit. And there won't be any of that bullshit anywhere where I can raise my voice either. Say it once, say it not to have to say it again. You do not deal yourself at hand in the conduct or formation of British foreign law defense policy by putting a bomb on a bus in Tower Stokes Square. You do not. Final. Do I have to say it twice? No. Will I listen to anyone who says that we should? I certainly will not. I certainly will not. And nor should anyone else. And the Prime Minister will not do so. And what people ought to realize is that there, there is indeed a connection between this and the Iraq war. The same people did this at uh, King's Cross and Edgware Road and Allgate uh, last week who last Friday blew up 24 school children in Baghdad. Yes, of course there's a connection. We're fighting the same people. And they will rue the day. We will, we will outlive and outkill and outfight them. They say they prefer death to life. Maybe they do. If they want to be martyrs, we're here to help. But our love, really here to help, but our love for London will outlive their hatred and their love for death, believe me. Here, no here. question about that. Here, here. I do spend probably a little bit more time than I should on 
I'm quite religion and uh, I have a certain amount of hostility to uh, to it. Uh, I think the most rational reason for it is because of the harm that I see it does. We were talking about that earlier. Uh, many people do simply awful things out of sincere religious belief, not using religion as a cover uh, the way Saddam Hussein may have done, but really because they believe that this is what God wants them to do. Going all the way back to Abraham being willing to sacrifice Isaac because God told him to do that. Putting God ahead of humanity is a terrible thing. It means that I don't have the presumption to say there's absolutely no God. I can't prove it. Right. But what I can say is I certainly want to, wouldn't want to live in a universe with one. The universe is far okay. more exciting to me and more in, enlightening and more, and more invigorating without a God. It's the, uh, the idea that people can somehow find spiritual solace in the idea that they are being controlled by some cosmic puppet maker versus the idea that, that we have this brief moment in the sun and, and our, mm -hmm. the meaning in our lives is one we create. And we, and, and we have this great ability to think about the universe. Let's, let's make the most of our brief moment in the sun. It's the central question of science, to try and understand why the universe is the way it is and make predictions about it. And to me, the fact that we've come so close to understanding the entire universe and its origins is just remarkable. I, I, I can't imagine why people wouldn't want to celebrate that and why they'd want to be afraid of that knowledge. Some people would rather that their children not know how the universe works. Mm -hmm. A for lot fear of people that it, actually. For, yeah, exactly, mm -hmm. for fear that it will affect their faith, then no, and what a, what a, what a disservice to, to children. And in fact, in that sense, I, I would have to say, I agree with, with Richard Dawkins, that in that sense, much of religion is, is child abuse. Do you get? <laughs> I think. <laughs> Whoa. The answer that I came up with, which is both honest and frustrates the crap out of theists, is I have no idea what would change my mind. I don't, and I find it a bit arrogant to presume that someone should think that I would have the capability of distinguishing a god from some amazingly advanced trickery. I don't know, but if you're right and there is a god, that god should know exactly what it should take to change my mind. And the fact that this God has not done this means that either this God doesn't exist or does not want me to know that he exists. Either way, not my problem. <laughs> Islam is not a religion of peace, and I woke up to the facts on the 11th of September 2001. Perhaps I should have woken up to the facts earlier, but I admit that I did that then at that time. Talking to people of my faith, Islam, and my friends, and discussing with them, I remember all kinds of fallacious arguments, but I remember one consistent thing, and that was to exempt Islam from any criticism. It was culture, it wasn't Islam. But a religion is born in a culture, and if that culture is not peaceful, then that religion is not peaceful. I was told it's politics. We've heard it tonight many times. It's not the religion. But Islam not only has a pious dimension, but it also has a political dimension, a complex system of laws, a political philosophy on how society should be organized. And if you look at that political system, it's anything but peaceful. What emancipated me from the order to submit my will completely to Allah which in practice means the concentration of power in the hands of a few, was to learn to think critically, the enlightenment. Vote against this motion and open up the flows of Islam for debate in order that Muslims, those who are not yet emancipated, may take charge of their own reason, of their own faculty. Vote against the motion that Islam is a religion of peace and toss, toss that fallacy into the trash can of history. Thank you. Thank you. I am Facing a problem at this moment. They, they, there, is, there is, I'm happy to say, a religion of peace in this world, but it's not Islam. Okay. To call Islam a religion of peace, as we hear ceaselessly reiterated, is completely delusional. Now, 
Jainism actually is a religion of peace. Jainism is a, that the core principle of Jainism is nonviolence. Gandhi got his nonviolence from the Jains. The crazier you get as a Jain, the less we have to worry about you. <laughs> yeah, it is. Jain extremists are, are actually, they are, they are paralyzed by their pacifism. Jain extremists just, they, they can't take their eyes off the ground when they walk lest they step on an ant. They filter every sip of water through cheesecloth lest they sw swallow and thereby kill a bug. So the problem, uh, notice, the problem is not religious extremism, okay, because extremism is not a problem if your core beliefs are truly nonviolent. The problem isn't fundamentalism. Which we often hear this said, these are euphemisms. I mean, the, the only problem with Islamic fundamentalism are the fundamentals of Islam. It should be irrelevant, but it isn't because it does infringe on people's liberties. Certainly religion, not spirituality. You know, someone believing in God, that's fine. Doesn't, harmless. Doesn't, absolutely, doesn't bother me at all. Religion isn't harmless. It, it's, when it's when your God starts telling you that you should kill homosexuals and you exactly. know, that's when it that's when it's not harmless anymore in the god delusion i made a seven point scale one is i'm totally confident there is a god seven is i'm totally confident there is not a god um six is to all in